Hi guys, we're back to proving the next theorem, and the next theorem is theorem 2. Theorem 2 has an asterisk next to it, which means that this proof is examinable. It's actually a very, very, very common proof to be asked, so you must know how to prove it. So let's start. First of all, this proof says the angle, that's an arc. Now what is an arc? For example, in this question, an arc, you can talk about arc AB. Simply an arc is a portion of the circumference between two points. So this question, this theorem states that the angle that an arc subtends at the center of the circle. Now what does that mean? Subtends means to make. So it's talking about the angle that these two points make at the center of the circle. So I've highlighted this in green and the angle would be angle O at the center of the circle. Now this theorem says that this angle at the center will be twice the angle that this exact same arc subtends at any point on the circumference. So where is that angle? That angle I've highlighted in yellow. So what this theorem is saying is that if you have an arc, in this case AB, the angle it makes at the center, in green, is exactly twice the angle that those two points make at the circumference, which I've highlighted in yellow. So how do we prove this? Well, first of all, let's write down what we're given. We're given circle center O with arc AB, and this arc subtends AOB, which is at the center, and ACB, which is at the circumference. What are we trying to prove? We're trying to prove the angle at the center, AOB, is twice that at the circumference, which is ACB. Now we need a construction. Our construction is CO, and we want to carry on through O until we reach a random point which we'll call D. So how do we write this mathematically? We say CO, and we must produce it to point D. Now to help me with labeling, I have decided to label angle O1 and angle O2. So those two angles, they're not equal necessarily, but they make up the whole of angle O at the center. Now let's start with the proof. Now personally in this proof, I like to use letters. The textbook doesn't use letters, so have a look at both and see which one you prefer. So I've said, let's let the angle ACO be equal to X and BCO be equal to Y. So I've filled those in on the picture. Make sure that you're following the labeling really carefully here. Now I've noticed that I have a couple of radii in these circles, which means they'll be equal. So where are these? They're OC, OA, and OB. So I have labeled them equal to each other, and I've stated in my proof that they're equal. Now, as soon as I've done this, I can see that this means that there are two triangles, and each of these two triangles are isosceles triangles because they have two equal sides. Now, we remember from grade 8 that an isosceles triangle not only has two equal sides, but two equal angles. And these are the angles opposite those equal sides. So I can now state that if the angle at C is X, the angle at A is also X. So I've labeled in my X. Now just be careful for this reason. You should have been taught in grade 10 that isosceles triangle is not an acceptable reason in this case. We must use the reason angles opposite equal sides. So now I have a triangle with an X and an X. Now this allows me to prove that angle O1 is 2X. Now where that comes from, in grade 8 we learned that the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the two interior angles on the opposite side of the triangle added together. So angle O1 will be equal to X plus X, which is 2X. And our reason, exterior angle of triangle. So I've labeled in my 2X on my picture. Now we can do exactly the same argument in the other triangle. I've now highlighted in red that the other two radii are also equal. So this would help me to argue that angle B is also Y. And therefore, I can say that similarly, angle O2 must be 2Y. Now we don't have to write out each of these steps again with angles opposite equal sides and exterior angle of triangle. In geometry, if you're going to follow exactly the same logic again, you're welcome to use the reason similarly and then state what you would have proved in exactly the same way. 
And now we're almost done. Because what happens is, is outside these two triangles, I have angle O1 plus angle O2. And according to my proof, those two angles now add to 2x plus 2y. Now I can rewrite this by saying angle O1 plus angle O2, and I can factorize out the two, so it's twice x plus y. Now if you have a look at my picture, angle O1 plus angle O2 is exactly the same thing as angle AOB. I just happened to divide it into two when I drew my pink line. So now I can say that AOB equals twice ACB. Now why is it equal to twice ACB? Well on the previous line it's equal to twice x plus y. And if you look at the picture, x plus y is angle C. So I can prove that AOB equals 2 ACB, which is exactly what I was trying to prove. Now the reason we use when we're proving this, when, sorry, when we're using this theorem, it's quite long. It's angle at center equals twice angle at circumference. Please notice the abbreviations of angle and circumference. You don't have to write out the entire thing. Now your textbook has two other pictures. They don't have to give you the picture drawn this way when they ask this theorem in an exam. But the proof follows exactly the same logic. So make sure that you go and look in your textbook at the two other pictures that can accompany this proof. Let's have a look at an example. In our first example, we are given arc BC. And arc BC is subtending 124 degrees at the center. It also subtends x at the circumference. Now I know that the angle at the center is twice that at the circumference, which means I can now work out that x must be 62 degrees because 124 must be exactly double what x is. So it's a very simple use of the proof. x is 62, angle at center equals twice angle at circumference. Let's go into a more difficult example. The problem is as soon as we have multiple angles at the center, people tend to get confused. In this case, we have arc AC. Now arc AC makes an angle at the center, angle O. But there's two angles at the center. But the 244 degrees is not related to angle X. What I've highlighted in yellow is the angle subtended at the center and x is the angle at the circumference. The 244 is not related to the x. It's the angle on the opposite side of the point that is related to x. But I don't have this angle. But if we remember grade 8, angles around a point add to 360 degrees. So I can say obtuse angle AOC equals 116 degrees, angles round a point. Now let me explain the use of my word obtuse. There's two angles at the center. There's the 244 and there's the angle O that I am trying to find out. Now both of those angles would be called AOC. So distinguish between the two, we would call the one reflex because it's bigger than 180 degrees and the other one obtuse. And in this case, I was interested in the obtuse angle AOC. Now where did I get the 116 degrees from? I took 360 and minus 244 because of angles round a point. Now this means I can get my answer for x. Because my angle at my center must be exactly twice that at the circumference. So if x was 58, my center angle would be twice that. So I have my statement and my reason. Now I can continue to find y because angle a, sorry, arc AC makes an angle of 244 degrees at the circumference and the arc AC also produces Y at the circumference which means my Y must be exactly half that of 244 because my angle at my center must be twice that at my circumference. Right, on to our last example. Our last example also confuses people because people think the 110 is related to X but exactly the same as example two, we have arc AC and it produces a reflex angle at O. And this reflex angle is what is related to X. Now how do I find this reflex angle? Well, reflex angle AOC would be 250 degrees. How did I get that? 
because my angles around a point will add to 360. Now this means I can determine the angle for x because my angle at my center equals twice my angle at circumference. So x is 125.